Sunday morning worship services of the Hamilton Church of Christ. If this is your first time with us, we're glad you're here. We hope that today's service brings you peace, joy, and brings you back next week. Hi everyone. We're so happy to be able to worship with you from our home. Over the past few weeks, we've had time to slow down, enjoy each other's company, and most importantly, put our trust in God. Matthew 11, 28 reads, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We have a special guest delivering today's message. His name is Sean McDonald, and he leads the church in Pittsburgh. However, he is Canadian. Him and his wife Joyce have been married for almost 38 years. They have three sons, two grandchildren, and lots of wisdom and experience to offer us. The title of his lesson is Bethany, Finding a Place of Rest. Please feel free to chat in the message board during our service. Before Sean's message, our brother Douglas, who is a proud bus driver for the city of Hamilton, will lead us in song. Thank you, Douglas, for continuing to serve the city of Hamilton and its people. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for giving us this gift of today. Thank you, God, for your word that helps us navigate through the times of uncertainty. God, please provide our leaders wisdom and good health. We pray for the medical staff and hospitals and nursing homes, for everyone on the front lines, grocery store staff, postal workers, truck drivers, and all the essential services. Be with them, strengthen them, and allow them to continue to serve. We pray for doctors, researchers, and those working in labs to find a vaccine that will end this pandemic. Help us to draw closer to you and to absorb the message with soft hearts. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, my name is Douglas Marshall from the Great Hamilton Church of Christ. We're going to sing a song called This I Believe, and I pray that it deepens your conviction about who God is, who we are before God. Amen. Our Father and 
everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe, I believe in you, and I believe you rose again, and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in you, and I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Good morning and uh, greetings from Ottawa, Canada. It's great to uh, be with you in Hamilton. We love Danny and Jillian so much and uh, so many of you that we, uh, we do know. It is, I was going to say, great to see you, but I don't really see you. But uh, it's great to know that I am with you in heart and certainly over the internet. Uh, we love the churches in Canada. At present, we are currently serving as uh, uh, leading the church in Pittsburgh, but we are here in Canada awaiting the processing of our immigration, which has been a long story in and of itself. But uh, we are very close to uh, making application and hopefully getting an interview and getting back to Pittsburgh. But with the virus, everything's shut down. So 
we've got to find some peace and rest and and some comfort realizing that God still got this. And so this is a very unusual time in our world's history. Um, you know, there, I don't think there's been anything like it in my lifetime that I have experienced. And certainly 9-11 was different. Uh, kind of the world stopped for a little bit, but not like this. Uh, the Vietnam War, certainly we were aware of what was going on. Uh, it was different in Canada versus the U.S., but nothing that I've ever been through is, is like this. And it's touching every single one of us. And uh, if you're like me, you have some days of calm and you have some days of anxiety. You have some days wondering what is going on. What do we need to do? And, uh, you know, we need to find some places of rest. And, uh, you know, I want to share a lesson here this morning. And it's, it's about a little village that's two miles east of Jerusalem. It is a village of Bethany. And the title of the sermon is Bethany Finding a Place of Rest. And Jesus needed to find places of rest and places of comfort. And I think this sermon speaks to me. It speaks to my heart and the things that I need to find peace and rest in. And hopefully it speaks to you this morning. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll dive into the rest of our study. Father, uh, we look to you. We come to you. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your sovereignty. And Father, we must admit that we are anxious, we're worried, we're upset, we're distracted, we're, we're uncertain with what is going on in this world. But we want to come to you, not only this morning, but uh, every day of our lives to, to realize you are a rock, you are a strength, you are a comfort. And so God, we, we need to come to you for that peace and that rest and so we do. Open our hearts this morning. Help us to see who you are and what you mean to us and make decisions that so we can be such a great light to the world because we, have find, we can find rest in a time that is certainly uncertain. Bless our study. We love you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when uh, Jesus came to earth, you know, although it was proclaimed through the angels that you know, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. It was not a time of peace. In fact, Herod, because of uh, threat to his kingdom, went about and killed all the firstborn sons. And so now Jesus, if I can use the term, had no children in his kindergarten class. Certainly not a time of peace. When he begins his ministry, you know, he's not embraced by the public He's not heralded as the hero. He goes from town to town, and instead of being welcomed even in his hometown, he's, he, he's, he's taken to the edge of a cliff and, and threatened to be thrown off the cliff. You know, and it's in Jerusalem that he eventually is taken, and he is crucified. And in Jesus' own words, it says, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In fact, he was kind of this nomad that, that, that wandered around through, through Israel and had no real home. The creator of the universe, imagine that, is rejected. Except with one exception. Seems to be there's one place where Jesus would be received, where he would be welcomed, and it's in this kind of obscure village of Bethany, two miles east of Jerusalem. And to be the home of Mary, Martha, Martha, Lazarus, and Simon the leper, Jesus' friends. You know, like I said, in the last few days of Jesus' life, he would go back and forth from Jerusalem to Bethany, finding this uh, place of rest and comfort. And it was Jesus that would find this comfort. That, you know, and I think about what we are going through, and I think about what we are experiencing and I believe whether in Hamilton, Ottawa, or around the world, we need to find some Bethany's in our lives. And we need to be Bethany's to our families and, and to our communities. And so, again, it's, we need to have a Bethany finding a place of rest. And first point, and we're going to turn in your Bibles, please, to uh, Luke chapter 10. And uh, the first point is uh, 
choose what is best. And let's read uh, a passage that we're probably very familiar with, but uh, it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him, and she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Two friends, very close to Jesus. Martha practiced Middle Eastern hospitality. Went all out, and who wouldn't with this uh, famous rabbi visiting your home? Offering hospitality, a place of rest, refreshment. And sure, this was not the, the first time, as I said, Jesus would come back and forth to Bethany during his last week on this life, in, on this earth. But she became worried, anxious, distracted. And here, here's what it means. Divided into parts, pulled apart in different directions. Upset, disturbed, troubled, the kind of the root word is there's commotion and riot in our lives, emotions that are, that are almost out of control. And it's kind of this noisy upheaval that she's experiencing in her life. And I, I think about what we're all going through right now, and I think, wow, that describes me. It describes us. I mean, you can't, every time you open your computer, every time you turn on the news... COVID-19, the coronavirus. It's all about that. Some of us, like I said, have been touched by it, either personally or, or close to us in family members or friends. Everyone has been touched by that. Everyone is, is upset and anxious, and we hear kind of foreboding uh, words about what the future is going to be over the next several months. And so our minds are distracted. Mine is. You know, even before this all hit, like I shared, uh, you know, immigration. I, I was wondering, what in the world, God, are you doing? I, I, have, I have a heart for the, the church in Pittsburgh, a heart for the people. And, and, and here we are just trying and, and stumbling around, trying to figure out what is God's plan. So I've had to find peace in that. And then now this hits, like I said. And so taking care of, of ailing parents and uh, all of the worry and anxiety that comes with it. And certainly my heart has been distracted and uh, torn in different directions. And now you have Mary. It says that Mary chooses what is better. You know, this is the idea that you, you actually look at something and you choose what is best? You, you, you pick that up. It's also, uh, it's also a word that is used kind of in law when you, you make a closing argument and you kind of, the defense rests. You say, this, these are the facts. This is the, you make the statement and it's, it's, it's all said and the decision now is made. You're moved to a conclusion. And it's interesting that this is the same Mary who in the next chapter will take an alabaster jar of perfume and anoint Jesus. She sits at his feet. She takes the posture of a student. Certainly unheard of in that day, both by from Jesus' perspective to have a, a, a woman as a student and both from Mary's perspective to sit at Jesus' feet. But she, she loves him and she cares for him. And, and a year's wage, she didn't care about the price. She cared about the Lord. He was the Messiah. He was the Christ. He was the anointed one. And so we need to choose what is better. And during these times, we can be distracted. Um, even though life at times seems out of routine, and we ha may have a lot of different kinds of time on our hands, we can be distracted. We can be distracted to look at the TV, look at the internet, 
just and not find time to sit at Jesus' feet and choose what is better. You know, we've got to be men and women eager to, to learn and spend time with Jesus. We've got to be men and women who will anoint Jesus and choose what is better. You know, it is a challenging time, but we do have to choose what is better. Secondly, it is a place of resurrection. And in John chapter 11, we read about the death of Lazarus, which is a close friend of Jesus. And it says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick, verse 1, from Bethany, the village Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, The sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. You know, and Jesus stays, stays back before he ends up going to Bethany. And uh, Martha can't quite grasp who Jesus is. She can't quite grasp this idea of resurrection and life. She knows he's the Christ. She knows he's come from God. But she doesn't actually really believe it, that he's the resurrection and the life. Let's keep reading verse uh, 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews had come along with their weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and trouble. Where have you laid him? And he asked, come and see, Lord. They replied, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Verse 38 to says, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by the time this was, there will be a bad order, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you have always hear me, and I said this for their benefit, for all those standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Then Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. You know, I'm, I'm incredibly moved Myself by Jesus, his compassion, his empathy, his, his ability and desire to, to connect with us and with people is one of the most admirable traits of Jesus. He is not this distant God. He is not this uh, unloving and uncompassionate Savior. He's very much connected. He very much feels our pain. You know, in Isaiah 53, when it talks about this suffering servant, it talks about he will lift up our illnesses and carry our pain, disease, illness, pain, death, yes, virus. You know, these we're seeing are conquerors. And certainly death is the great conqueror. And Jesus gives us hope. He gives us a vision of resurrection. Jesus will raise the dead. Jesus will be glorified. We will be raised from the dead. We will be changed. Our lives will bring glory to God. We will not be those in bondage. We will be set free. You know, in this passage, it talks about Jesus being 
excuse me, deeply moved. And it's both a compassion and a tenderness, but it's also an indignance that Jesus realized that death and pain have such a hold on this life. And he looked forward to a time when there would, he would be set free. Romans 8 tells us, <coughs> excuse me, Romans 8 tells us that the world is groaning, but someday Jesus will set us free. There is a resurrection. There is hope. I'm reminded during this time that life is fleeting. And I need to long for a resurrection. But it's not just that. It's also a resurrection of our lives and our mortal lives. And I challenge us during this time to go after some things in our character. To go after some things in our lives. Because also in Romans chapter 8, it says, The power that raised Jesus from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies. That resurrection is meant to bring some resurrection in our current life and our current situation. And I think we can be an incredible example of resurrected disciples and followers of Jesus during this time. To have hope and to have promise and to have heart. You know, it is tough. But again, as I get older, the more I'm reminded, and I have aging parents closer to death, the more I'm reminded that death is a certainty. But this passage in John 11 reminds me that there is a resurrection. So yes, in Bethany, it is a place of resurrection. And lastly, Bethany is a place of worship. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. Almost done here. It's been uh, great to share a few thoughts with you. Um, certainly love uh, Danny and Jillian, like I said, so much and appreciate what they do and what they, they mean for us. Um, Luke chapter 24, verse uh, 50 says, Then they led them out to the vicinity of Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he blessed them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and he returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. You know, we often give the disciples a bad rap for their doubt. And certainly, they had their doubts. They had their uncertainties about a resurrection. And Jesus had to spend, in many ways, 40 days convincing him, convincing them that he had, in fact, raised from the dead. But I love this passage because it, it shares a different perspective. And that is the fact that Bethany was a place of worship, a place of praise, a place of joy, where they could be with Jesus and they get a small glimpse of heaven as they see him raised and gone back to heaven. And I pray that we still can find this place of worship in our lives. Again, to choose what is best, to realize that we have a resurrection, and, and then to, to worship God, making sure that we can continue to give thanks for all that he has done for us. You know, I, I again, appreciate the opportunity to share with you, and my prayer is that all of us find a Bethany during this challenging and uncertain time. Place, yes, to sit at Jesus' feet, but to choose what is better, to actually, to make sure that we're walking with God, to, to make sure we're experiencing resurrection and are focused on the right things, that, it, that Bethany is a place of resurrection for us, and ultimately, that we worship God, that we love God, that we give to God during this time, and we all experience this small glimpse of heaven. And I pray that as we experience Bethany, that we individually, that we as families, that we as communities will be a Bethany to those around us. I really do pray that we all find Bethany 
and find our place of rest. Love you. We'll be praying for you. Please pray for us, and God will get us through all of this. Take care and have a great day. amazing. Thank you, Doc, for a great song. Thank you also, uh, Kaylin, for a great time of worship today. And of course, thank you, Sean. Great, great lesson today. I loved the uh, image of Bethany, uh, a place uh, of uh, rest that we need to find, we need to have in our home. So I had that image that my home needs to be a Bethany. Our church needs to be a bit in the, our small group in the church. And, uh, and of course, ourselves, like my heart, needs to be a place of rest. And not just a place of rest, but also a place of a resurrection filled with hope and also a place of worship filled with uh, joy and praise, of course. So once again, thank you so much, Sean. 
so grateful for technology and uh, we were able to to, have, to share that special time together all the best with your immigration and also all the best with the pittsburgh church you'll be in our prayers now i'm gonna let my uh caring queen my wife make a special announcement Yes, as you know, next Sunday is Easter, and it's such a special time for many of us to remember the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we are so grateful to be able to have, once again, a joint service with some of the Canadian churches, Halifax and Ottawa, Newmarket and Hamilton. And uh, we're so excited because we have uh, Tony Singh, the leader of the Ottawa Church and a great friend to many of us. Uh, he's gonna be preaching a message called This Changed Everything. So we look forward to that. Easter is a time where there are many people around the world who make that extra effort to come to church. So we really wanna take the opportunity and for us all to be inviting our family, our friends, coworkers, neighbors, to come and join us and to celebrate together. So we look forward to seeing you there. Yeah. And uh, by the way, we want to encourage you to go on our website, uh, go regularly this week. You can have all the details for uh, this uh, next Sunday uh, service for Easter. Uh, by the way, I want to um, uh, thank uh, Mark for a great job keeping up with the website. And I know a lot of young people will step up and helping us to go to the next uh, level. Go on the website. You'll see all the uh, announcement and also new initiative we'll put uh, together very soon. If you're a visitor, I, I hope, first of all, you had a great time with us. We really, really want to encourage you to plug in with uh, some of our small groups. So you can go on the website on the top with the menu uh, bar on the top, click Ministries. Or through the main page, you'll see another section called Get Involved. Click on to those and you'll see different ministries we do have. So if you're students, uh, you have the Shine group. If you are young adults, uh, there's uh, the Rooted group. Uh, there's, uh, as Colin Marge did the opening today, the Young Families Ministry. And we have uh, for uh, other groups in St. Catherine, Buffalo, New York State, and a few groups in uh, Hamilton and Burlington. So please, join reach out to, to us and make sure you don't uh get yourself isolated but you can plug with other people and we can encourage one another also uh, if you have the desire to uh, support our mission we're helping a lot of people in needs right now we do also have a project to to help orphans in a school for unprivileged kids in haiti so you can go on our website on the top right you'll see a give button we uh, thank you in advance for your generosity. So as I mentioned, we're going to have new initiative. One of them, my wife will talk about it in a sec. Yes. One of our sisters, who many of us know, Dawn Burroughs, uh, she has just been sharing with me and with others about just things that she's been learning in her personal time with God and in the Bible. And so we thought, what a great opportunity. Let's keep on sharing that. So what we are going to be starting to do next week is we will be posting some of those and it's called Scribbles and Dribbles. And we are going to post it actually on our uh, Hamilton Church Facebook page. So we will definitely be giving you more information, but we'll be starting that next week. And we hope that uh, it really encourages your soul. Yeah. Thanks, Don. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this past week, we had uh, a young man, Aaron Taylor, who did a great uh, series on con contentment. You'll uh, find it on our YouTube channel. And uh, this week, he has a new topic, uh, a new direction. I will let Aaron share briefly about it. Aaron? Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to announce the uh, second series in Daily Quiet Time Ramblings. Uh, it's going to be titled Kintsugi. It's based on the Japanese practice of uh, using gold to uh, weld together broken pottery uh, and finding beauty in the, uh, in the thing that was once broken. Uh, so I can't wait to dive into all that with you, uh, and I look forward to producing the uh, five-part series next week. Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing. Well, uh, we're done now. Let's uh, take uh, a moment and uh, reflect and think about the great service we had today. 
great time together. I know many of you, you'll break up in the small groups, continue the, the, the fellowship time. Uh, for the visitor, please contact us. We'll plug you in with uh, other people. At this time, I would like us to just uh, take a time to, to think, reflect for the, the next few days ahead of us, and let's think about the best way we can find uh, our place of uh, rest mm -hmm. in our life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so, so much, so much for the time together this morning. Thank you for technology, the way despite the quarantine, we are able to connect with one another. Thank you for our brother, Sean, who's uh, even is a way we were able to invite him in our living rooms, in our homes today. Thank you so much for his uh, powerful lesson. We pray that we can uh, build conviction. We can be moved to action with what we heard today and in, 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 in having a, a, a different week, Father. We pray that we can find uh, this time and this place of rest in this chaotic uh, world and time we're going through, Father. I pray for one another to be tighter than ever, to, to, to have that uh, sense that we are together. We're going to go through this all together. And Father, we uh, also want to be reminded the way we take care of our own children, you take care of us as well. You are there and we're not alone. We love you so much and we pray that we're going to have an amazing day an amazing week and can't wait to get together again next Sunday for our Easter service. We love you, Father. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.